told you guys when I reviewed the 7000D that I was gonna pull you guys to see if you wanted me to reinvigorate, reinvigorate, bring Skunk Works back to life. So we're gonna try and do that 2021 style. The inventor of NAND flash memory that changed life as we knew it, Kioxia is a leading provider of flash memory and SSDs. Kioxia offers a line of innovative NVMe SSDs for many environments, including mobile compute, high-performance gaming PCs, and hyperscale and enterprise data centers. Leading edge PCIe Gen 4 performance SSDs for AMD Epic and Intel Xeon-based servers with PCIe 4.0 technology offer extreme speeds with unparalleled reliability, making Kioxia the obvious choice for those who demand excellence for any use case. To see everything that Kyoxia America has to offer, follow the sponsored link in the description below. It's been a long time since Skunk Works has actually been used or run. Uh, two years since that system's actually been turned on, somewhere around there. Um, it's been sitting there in the background, looking sad, half drained, half corroded, looking terrible. And a lot of you guys who have been watching the channel for a long time know about Skunk Works. Skunk Works was, when I first started this channel almost nine years ago, I wanted to build some crazy over the top PC that was just impractical, unrealistic, overpriced, overpowered, just stupid. And it became a centerpiece of the channel and it evolved. Many, I think we had three or four versions of it. Started with a 4790K Devil's Canyon and a uh, single uh, 680, I think it was in there. And then it moved up to two 680s and then it had three 980s and then it had three tight next Maxwells. And then after that, it just turned into um, did I have? Yeah, I had three, no, two Titan XPs, because remember they didn't do three at the time. And then from Titan XPs, it ended up with two 2080 Ti's, and that's kind of where it was left right there. But one of the things that Skunk Works always retained was pieces of a previous build. And it gave me an opportunity to be able to show you guys like how to reuse parts, how to clean them. You don't, a lot of people think like, oh, I'm gonna build a new PC, I want a new water cooling loop, I need all new stuff. And a lot of times that can be true if you don't take care of it. But what we're gonna do today is we're gonna kick off this series. This is gonna be a build series. And there's no way to get this all done because one of the things about Skunk Works too is I always like to take time to do little mods. Um, like for instance here, this is, this is pretty basic. This is one of the original pumps out of it. I do plan on reusing this um, because the 7000D is a very square type shape. And I, I, this has always been one of my favorite EK water block D5 reservoir pump combo deals. And what I don't like about it, about the new ones is they're round and the fittings come off at weird angles. So I love, good, 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 good tone. Anyway, it's actually got a new reservoir because you could change off the, you could change the uh, cylinders and over time they'll start to discolor and stuff. This one's actually new, but some of the parts look pretty bad. If you look down in there, I don't know if you can see it, there's actually some blue in there, which is the old green fluid actually, because there's some blue and green. Um, just gotta clean all that out. The platform though, this is gonna be interesting because this is gonna be the first time Skunk Works will be based on an AMD system. I said a million times, if AMD ever became on top, I would start using AMD again. And we told you guys recently that AMD has been what we've been using exclusively in this studio now for the last two years. In fact, we did a long-term user report on that recently. Phil's currently using a 3970X. Yeah. This is a 3960X. So, Phil, I need your CPU because we're gonna make this one the over the top, cool, no. Phil actually uses his for production. This one's just gonna be more or less about building a badass AMD system because Skunk Works has always been based on Intel. In fact, that's X299 in there right now. That's a 9980XE. No, that's a 7980XE. The 9980 is in Nebula, which was also Intel based. Um, we're not using that anymore. It's delitted and all that. It's a, I think it's an 18 core CPU, something like that. So this is a 24 core CPU. So clearly this is better, but I am reusing I am reusing this. There's, there's still motherboard <laughs> screws in it. <laughs> no, there was a motherboard standoff screws. Anyway, the CPU is already mounted, so I'm not gonna be showing that. That's a uh, Torx, so you have to do it in a certain order. If you guys are watching about Threadripper, that'll make sense already. This is a Zenith Extreme motherboard. Uh, Phil has been using the exact same combo only with the 3970X now with the latest chipset drivers and the latest BIOS and all that. And a lot of the weird wonkiness stuff that we talked about in our long-term report has pretty much vanished. My issue I had with this system when I was using it on air-cooled, this was the same air-cooled one I had that I built, was having the random shutdowns when I was gaming. We still think that was power supply related, but we'll be changing to a 1600 watt power supply because I can. So we got some things we need to do today. Uh, probably won't even, I might take the 7000D out uh, so that we can kind of start getting some mock-up in there. Like I gotta figure out where I'm gonna mount this guy. But what I wanna start with 
We will be cleaning this pump. I might even be changing this pump entirely. I need to order some custom cables from Cable Mod. Cable Mod is our cable supplier, so I've got to put in an order for that. I think I'm going to go back with the yellow and black, which was the original Skunk Works theme. If you guys don't remember, we then went from yellow and black to orange and gunmetal when we got the, uh, well, it was yellow in there as well, but we, went, we did orange and then we ended with green, as you can see. I want to go back to the black and yellow bumblebee look. So I want to take this radiator out of the top. This is an EKSE 480. This is one of the first ones that they had made and they sent it to me. I want to reuse this rad. So we're gonna have to start cleaning that and getting that flushed out. This loop is already drained. It's been sitting here like that for a year. Yeah, about a year, more than a year actually, before the pandemic, so a long time. So let's get this rad out of here and let's get it over here and let's just start getting some of the parts cleaned up and hopefully by the end of the day, we can get some like the motherboard mounted in the 7000D. We can start figuring out our radiator layout, where our pump's gonna go. It's gonna get crammed, that's the idea. I like big fat cases to have big fat parts. I can tell I've become a little jaded because if we look at this rad, let's take it out carefully, look at this. There's no bent fins on there. <laughs> you know, I feel over time I was like, ah, rads are built to last and just like smooshing fins and stuff. Look at that, this rad has no scratches. <laughs> Let's put this in perspective. This rad is at least four or five years old. Let me grab one that's only a year or two old that we use for other projects. Well, that size isn't too bad. There's a smash fin there, it's all scratched. There's still tape stuck to it because I get lazy and I'm like, when we're doing stuff, I just like to tape the fans on. <laughs> the thing that sucks is you can see it's taking some of the paint with it. And you might be like, well, Jay, just grab a new one. I don't actually have a new one. <laughs> People think that I've just, oh yeah, you know, he's the original YouTube water cooler guy. Not the original water cooler guy, but I'm the one that really kind of made it mainstream and popular and then, you know, I started bringing attention to a lot of the modding community. They've obviously been doing a lot longer than me. They think I've got parts just literally coming out the ass. I don't. Most of my stuff's reused. Like I'm about to do again right here. So what I might have to do is obviously I need to flush both of these rads. If I use both. If not, I'll use a 360 and a 480. Um, it's way overkill for one CPU and one GPU. Because one of the sad things about Skunk Works this time around it's gonna be the first time it's only got one GPU. <laughs> it's like a bunch of grapes, but fans. Let's talk about the block real quick before we start taking things apart and dropping stuff everywhere. I got two TR4 blocks I could use. Uh, these are EK blocks because they're one of the only brands that are actually making specific TR4 blocks that are good. <laughs> so. We've got a Hasetal, which is the, the black one, and then we've got the clear Plexi. I'm not so sure I'm gonna go with yellow coolant. I want to, but do you guys remember everything I went through with the yellow? Things have changed though. The formulas have changed, the materials have changed. We still believe that one of the reasons why it was changing color so badly was because of how hot the loop gets when you, see, when I was gaming with three Titan X Maxwells, it was still supported. So all three Titan X Maxwells would go to 100% or 95% load. That's a lot of heat. I mean, we were talking a, a good thousand watts overclocked into that one loop with a single 560 rad right here. This is a 560, so that's four 140 millimeter fans. That's a lot of heat. And uh, what was it, Mayhem's was the brand we were using at the time, was pretty convinced that it was a combination of the excess heat and then, not galvanic corrosion, but they, they were blaming some of the copper content in the radiator, saying, well, this, this copper has more oxidation, yada, 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 and that's what's causing it to, the colors to fall out and stuff. I'm just really unsure if I want to even take the chance of doing that again. With a single GPU, or maybe two 3090s for the hell of it, and I might just go with the black tubes painted, because I still love the way that looks with the black tubes, or I had talked about you know, the glass tubing that I learned how to bend and maybe do glass tubing stuff. The other thing is like, the, the, there was this idea that the PETG was reacting to it. Since all of the drama that I had regarding the yellow coolant turning brown all the time, PSAs have gone out from these cooling brands saying PETG and glycol based stuff interact poorly. 
And I do believe that the Mayhem's pastel stuff is, has got glycol in it. I don't remember. If I use glass, that's borosilicate. It is inert. It is not going to react to any fluid that's in it. That's why they use it for science. But I'm, I'm thinking about going with the black here. I, I, I think I like the way just the solid black looks. So let me go ahead and get this mounted up real quick at least. So this is in there. That way, I just get that out of the way and then we'll bring the case out here. <laughs> okay, if you haven't seen our unboxing and first look at like the features and tear down of this case, you need to do that. It's so basic, but the top, because Corsair put the yellow. Oh, hey. It's like, that's when we go skunk works. <laughs> we showed in the unboxing how this is a separate piece from that. I have a feeling with this, okay, this, this motherboard, that's gonna be necessary. Yep. You know why I'm excited about this? Because here at the studio, I've not had a Skunk Works type computer. I've had actually, I was sort of keeping it real, right? I was just using out of the box stuff and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, I feel like I, I lost a lot of my excitement for building because the custom builds are what I love doing. And then obviously with the pandemic and everyone being mad they can't buy stuff, I stopped doing it. Unfortunately, enough of you out there were like, screw the haters, just, you know, build what makes you happy. We're gonna watch anyway. So that's what I'm doing. Help, <laughs> help. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. It. <laughs> I, it's white cases I'm not quite as delicate with because they don't show scratches, but black does. Yeah. So if I can make it through this build without anything getting scratched and torn up, that will sort of be a, a miracle. And then we can figure it out. All right, so let me get this guy in there. Do a little test fit. There we go, see? Look at that. What you just look at it? Because we have this big VRM cooler up here with active cooling, they have both EPS power, PCI Express supplemental power. Actually, no, that's for the CPU also because supplemental is down here, which is a Molex, which is odd. But I would actually have to use that if I'm gonna do two 3090s just to be safe, especially if they're overclocked. But I like how all the power and stuff is on this side, which means the cables will look nice. I won't have to screw with trying to get stuff to squish up here next to a rad, which means I can go with a thicker radiator up here if I'd like. I'm fairly certain I'm not gonna utilize this back area here with any fans. I believe having four intake, four exhaust, both with rads, similar grills in, in front of them, be perfect enough airflow. One thing I'm thinking about doing here though is this. I've had this thing for a while now and I've never had a reason to use it. So this is a rear distro plate that we actually have showed this and people showing us our, their builds when we do our little build react series. And so that gives us a little distribution plate, which I probably would have to remove. Oh yeah, that screws right there. It's screwing it up. So I would just put, I would just use my threaded plugs in there. Not the big fat plugs, but like the rubber ones so that paint doesn't get in there. And I would just scuff this up and paint it the SEM black. And I think it would look real good. This is the kind of stuff that I spend a lot of time trying to figure out. Oh wow, we're gonna get so lucky with this. Look at that, it's so full, I love it. And then I'll have to put one of the, in fact, I have it somewhere. See, this is why I keep all my crap. All the stuff that's like, Jay, why do you keep that garbage? I'll show you why. So this can mount to here like that, right? Perfect spacing. These outer holes line up perfectly with these holes. I just lined them up. I'm all about the mock-ups, if you can not tell. It's also why I keep every single one of my screws. So... Look at all those screws. Oh, this is only one. We've got three containers. There's two more on the shelf over there. <laughs> that would actually work well because... See how much I get ADD? Like, I'm in the middle of a something. A middle of a something. <laughs> of a something. And then a something else distracts me of the something of I'm doing. So I'm probably not gonna reuse this Alpha Cool pump either. I have a brand new D5 that I'd like to put in here. But there we go. So I had the Singularity Computers bracket. I might have to find a way to support the top a little bit because I don't want it flopping around. But if I, oh, that's pretty sturdy. Yeah, I wouldn't ship it like that. Like I would put a bracket on there, but I like it to be open and not see a, you can kind of see where the bracket was on here. See how there's some scuffs? So I might still replace this tube. Um, but if I calculated all of this correctly, 
You can see I've got the writing on the outside here. This is the old D5X res CSQ. CSQ were the things that had the circles. This should be enough height to clear this. And then there should be enough height here still for tubing. And then I, you can see I routed the, the cable to come out the backside. So, it's like I've done this before. So that's how that's gonna look. And then the nice thing about the way this case is designed is the fans go on this side. So I don't have to deal with extra thickness of the fans being pushed out. So this is why I like doing it this way because you can start to see it come together already. Look at that. Dude, this is like perfect. The height, square, square, square. Right? All the angles are 90 in this case. I mean, they've got these triangle cut like breather holes and stuff. But if I had done the round reservoir here, it, to me, it would just look out of place. But I use the EK res or the radiator specifically instead of the Corsair ones because the Corsair ones, although very good, they've got these designs in the tanks, which in my opinion, just won't look as good as say that. That's gonna interfere with those fittings there. And that's specifically because I'm going with a thick rad here. And this is why we do the mock-ups. So if I put this 240 here, but I center it on the motherboard, I mean, that's gonna be a 480 plus a 260 worth of cooling. I'd like to point out that so far, all of this is being done with my trusty, that's the wrong screw, trusty iFixit kit. If you guys don't know by now, we're sponsored by iFixit. Or more or less, I should say, we sponsor them. We allow them to sponsor us. Look in the description below. You guys will find some deals they've got going on all throughout the year and we're constantly updating that so you guys can get the best deals on your iFixit kits. Look, you think I'm kidding? You think I'm kidding? Hmm? This is our iFixit drawer. So we got all of our iFixit tools here, screwdriver kits and stuff, magnetic. We got our, we got your bigs, we got your littles. Where's the big one? I like the big one, the big one. Oh yeah, that's the biggest. See, you know, the guy that's just a friend. So this is by far the best gift you can give any tech head, especially anyone who likes to build computers or has any sort of hobby where they use a screwdriver. Description down below, iFixit. Explosions. I think if I lower this actually, I think this will line up with that right there. Oh wait, ah oh, man, it's hitting this guy, that rivet. People get freaked out when they see me drilling out. There's a motherboard in there. It's fine, just take compressed air and as you know, Derek would say. Ha ha. It's the little things that make me happy. Yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect height. So now what that means is I'd be able to do stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna end up doing like I typically do where I go out from the radiator into the top of the res and then out of the res. So only one of these plugs have to be used. The lower one here, which is kind of hard to see, it's in the shadow, that'll get plugged. Now I need to make sure we have enough link for our graphics card. So this is a 3090 EV, an EVGA 3090 for the Win 3. You can see we have plenty of room. It's close. But if I run two of these, one will go here, and then one will go here. Like, I really want to use two because it's, it's a Skunk Works type build. But it's funny because it's just, I just know it's going to be wasted. It's a wasted card. I mean, I'm not going to 3D mark on it. None of the games use SLI anymore. So I could vertical mount it. I mean, that would definitely fill up the space, right? If I do that, then I'll probably just end up using my Strix card that already has a block on it. The problem is my Strix card, it's the Corsair, so it's the clear, and I would want to get a solid block. So maybe I'll get a solid block for the EVGA card, but that'll fill up the bottom nicely like that. So that's probably where we're going to end it, because I know I said we were going to clean stuff, but that'll be in our next video because I had to know what I was gonna use before I bother cleaning anything. Like this card is filthy too. You can see this is one that I even lapped a little bit. You can see I sort of lapped that die. But I need to now source blocks. Now that I know, well, whether I use the Strix for EVGA card, they are all, both those cards are three eight pin connectors. So I can get my cables ordered from Cable Mod to get our, our cables for this. I need to get our vertical amount uh, for the graphics card, because I do, I do think vertical in this will look nice. It's a way to fill up the case with only one card, not to mention the face of the card is usually the prettiest part. 
And then if I get an EK block that matches, because I know they make them for the Further Wind 3 now, and I get the Acetol version, it'll just match. It'll be black with silver or with the EK logo and stuff. I could even potentially if, add some RGB lighting to the back. Yes, I know, stop. To the back of it, that way it'll add glow to the motherboard. So that way, if I'm doing yellow lighting, because the Skunk Works, see Skunk Works had no lighting in it, with the exception of like one white LED strip to glow, to make the yellow parts, because I had the painted fan rings and all that, to make those glow. Now I'll be doing a lot of that with RGB, which didn't really exist when Skunk Works first came around. So I could theme it with lighting. Now I can do that. It just kind of sucks that it's gonna cover up the chrome bit there, but I feel like taking this cover off and maybe even painting it the matte black. But there is RGB lighting right there, which you're not gonna be able to see, which is fine. I mean, we don't want to see too many logos and stuff blowing, but I think that's all gonna fit in just, it, it, it meets my aesthetic itch. It, it scratches it, if that makes sense. Cause I, everything, everything's squared. Like even if the, this is upright like this, it's square, 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 square. So I, I like that a lot. So anyway, that's where we're gonna end it. Make sure you guys check in for the next part where we're gonna now disassemble the reservoir and the tank and the pump and get that all cleaned out. We'll flush the rads, get all that gunk out of there. Uh, this is a brand new block, so I don't have to do anything with that except for maybe an initial flush to get any sort of uh, oils or anything out of there from the machining process. And I still don't know if we're gonna use this. So if you guys wanna see how this turns out, make sure you follow and are subscribed. And uh, thanks for watching guys, and we'll see you in the next one.